Hey guys, it's Bob Morreale here with the Tuning School, and today I am welcoming Brett Lundquist, the newest member of our team. And this week's Tech Tuesday, we're going to be discussing different force induction systems and which one you want to choose for your application. Hey guys, welcome back. So we're gonna be talking about choosing the best force induction system for your application. So Brett, let's start with positive displacement. Tell me, who is the ideal customer or user? Well, the ideal customer with one of these is pretty much gonna be a street and strip type of application. Someone who's probably got a V8 already. Um, and you know, once that kind of instant torque, um, day to day kind of you know drivability is just kind of consistent overall, um, really good low end. Um, you know, those kind of things. So, uh, you know, someone maybe makes it to the strip a lot, but also, you know, just daily drives the vehicle. Tell me about the pros of that system then. Yeah, you know, the pros with this system is basically gonna be its packaging is generally pretty compact. Uh, you know, you're gonna take the intake manifold out and it's basically gonna replace that there in the valley of your V8. Supercharger wine. That's the best. That's, yeah, so I mean, that's pretty addicting. So that's a lot of fun. Yep. Um, and then, again, we just mentioned it, but that low end power, that torque, it's always moving air. Yeah. So the instant you start to give it some throttle, there's air rushing into the engine. That that torque is just basically That instant. can't be beat right there. No, that's... it's a lot of fun. It's a tire fryer. It's a tire fryer. Yeah, so, um, and then it's gonna be really reliable and consistent. You know, it's a pulley system. So, you know, the same boost every day, you know, pretty much is gonna give you those results day in, day out. Absolutely, and so the OEMs use that type of system, so there's gotta be a reason for that on the reliability side of things. Right, you know, you have like the Hellcats, the GT500, you know, mm -hmm. all those kind of vehicles. A lot of the V8s these days are gonna have ZL1, ZR1, Absolutely. you know. They're so also, they're right. all gonna have a, a, a positive displacement blowers on there. So we talked about the pros, compact, we got great wine, low end power and torque, and they're reliable and consistent, but there's always a con. Yeah, now cons basically come into the form of uh, parasitic loss is one of the biggest ones because it takes energy of that engine to actually run that supercharger. So you're going to basically use some of your horsepower to turn that, that blower over. And so there's a little bit of a loss there. Um, also, it's gonna be a, a usually a less efficient system when you get to higher boost applications. Now, there's some really cool technologies coming out from some of these blower companies, though, that are really kind of blurring that line. So I can't say like right. high boost is off the table, right. but you know, you're know you usually not running 30, 40 pounds of boost no. on a positive displacement blower. No. Another thing that you can't do with one of these is change the boost on the fly. So like a turbo, you know, you can have a boost controller or something like that. These are pulley driven. Yeah. So you know it might take you a few hours to change out your pulley, right. change your tune, and you're ready to go. Also, can't be fitted to every application. Right. You know, you're not going to put a positive displacement blower on a four cylinder, most likely. Yeah. Um, I mean, they make them, but right. it's, it's the demand it's, has to be there. Yeah, it's just not a, yeah. a kind of like a, a system that is available for everything. Right. So, um, not as custom for most things. That makes sense. Um, so, those are some of the cons. So, it's got a bit of a drag, parasitic loss. Right. Less efficient at higher boost. Cannot really vary the boost. I mean, it, there's ways, but not really often. And then no real custom applications because they have to cast all that right. for that particular engine. That makes a lot of sense. So, so overall, PDs are awesome, but are they right for you? That's a good question. Centrifugal, who is the ideal customer? Yeah, now centrifugals, these are kind of a blend between what we're gonna talk about in a minute is turbochargers and the positive displacement blowers we just talked about. Right. So they're a supercharger, but they're kind of like a turbo on a belt. And your ideal customer there is going to basically be someone who wants that higher end power, not really looking for the low end torque. Um, maybe already has an engine that makes great low end or something. Um, drag, drag strip people, you know, really high mile an hour. They want that yeah. top end, you know, just that run, you yep. know. Um, but they, you know, they also want something that's kind of more consistent or less complicated than maybe what the next system, sure. the turbocharger system. Sure. So, um, you know, some of the uh, pros with that's centrifugal good. is going to be that it's going to be more efficient at higher boost levels. Okay. Um, that's just kind of how they're designed. Their power band is more like a turbo or a bigger right. turbo where it's going to come in later in the RPM band. Right. Um, and boost increases with that power band, so you're going to have that power pull, climbing, pull, you know. Pull. So you just kind of keep getting set back in your seat, which is a lot of right. fun. So they're kind of, when you think about it, the back to the positive displacement for a minute, if you look at the dyno chart, it's like a, it's like a table. You know, as soon as you floor it, the PD blower, you get boost now, torque now, and the power comes on, and then the higher RPM, it tends to kind of taper a little bit. Right. Whereas on the dyno chart for a centrifugal, you would see more of a gradual gain without the tapering off at the top. Exactly. So it depends on the type of driving that you like. So, you know, maybe you like to roll on the throttle and just enjoy that RPM build, and a higher RPM motor might even benefit more from a centrifugal than one that's done at 5,000. I agree. Okay, so there's your pros. You got some efficiency, higher RPM power band. 
Let's talk about the cons. Uh, well, with the cons with this, it's going to be some of the same things that we just talked about with the positive displacement blower. For example, parasitic loss, it's belt driven, so it's going to need that engine to turn it over and it's going to take a little bit of horsepower to do so. Um, packaging restraints in the engine bay can be a little bit of a problem as well because, um, again, there's not a kit for every vehicle. Now, these can be made into custom kits, but generally speaking, you're, you're taking something off the shelf that someone's making and bolting it on in a weekend, sure. you know. Um, so, you know, that can be a pro, but yep. at the same time, just maybe you don't have an application for your, your or a, a, a setup for your application. Right. Um, cost of entry. These can be pretty expensive sometimes, um, but I, I think it's worth it. Um, and another thing you can't do with these, like a turbo, is you cannot vary uh, boost on the fly. So uh, it's pulley driven, you know, basically. Now, again, they have some clever new systems. Right. They're starting to kind of change yep. that, but it's not as dynamic as, say, a turbo system where you really can change a lot. Boom. Um, so boost. this is, you know, one of those things where it's a lot more like a positive displacement blower and your boost is going to be the same every day. Right. So you're pretty much set with your boost. You can, you can run it like a PD blower or a turbo. So it's kind of in the middle of the two. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a, it's a great system for a lot of people. Patching, packaging restraints, cost of entry, cannot vary boost on the fly. That's kind of just similar to a PD, yeah. but you get some upsides of a turbo. Power band's different. Yep, absolutely. So that's cool. It's time to move on to turbos. So who's the ideal customer and why? Well, I think turbochargers really have a broad range of ideal customers. Um, you've got OEMs using them in almost everything these days, um, really just to replace larger engines that were less fuel efficient and still get the same power, fuel economy, things like that. When it comes to the performance aftermarket, though, uh, turbochargers really, again, yeah. fit a lot of different builds, you know, um, from four cylinders, six cylinders, V8s, you know, V10s, Anybody. whatever it is, yeah. a turbocharger can be fitted to that system. Um, you know, a lot of the drag racers these days, you know, yeah. pro mods even, they're using turbochargers. So it's kind of a jack of all trades. Sure. You know, um, some of the pros with the turbocharger system is that there's a lot of aftermarket bolt on applications. Mm. It might take you a little more than a weekend to install, right. but they are already kind of designed and fitted with all For the plumbing vehicle. and everything to go together. The other great thing is, though, there's lots of custom applications. Mm. So, you know, if you have a system or a vehicle that just doesn't have an aftermarket application that you can click and add to your cart, right. you can go to a shop and get something installed. Absolutely. Um, another nice thing about it is that there's lots of different combinations. So if you're looking for more low end, mid range or high end power, uh, you can basically pick or, you know, consult a shop to help you pick something that's going to fit your application and your goal in your power delivery. Right. You know, not everybody wants something that just blazes down the track. Some right. people want something that's best stop yep. like the stop stoplight. Stoplight, stoplight. You know. Yeah. Another really cool thing about turbos is there's no parasitic loss. It actually uses exhaust energy to drive the turbo. So you're not going to experience that loss from actually driving it. You're using something that's already done, which Free is energy. you know, bring air in and combust it and push it back out to spin that turbo. And boost can be changed on the fly. One of my favorite things. There you go. So you can run around in low boost, it's raining out, you know, it's yep. slick, whatever, turn the power down, and then boom, you can hit a button or change your tune or whatever it might be, and you can have that high boost application for race gas or E85 or whatever it is you want to sure. do. So lots more flexibility in this system. Sure, absolutely. So one could say you could almost drown in the options. Yeah, yeah, that's actually one of the cons, I would say. Okay, yeah. so we've hit pretty much all the pros, right? We, yeah, I think so. We got custom kits from the aftermarket, infinitely variable. We're using exhaust energy and boost can be changed on the fly. So tell me about those cons. Yeah, so like you mentioned, uh, kind of can be overwhelming with sure. all the different options. So you really do need to, if you're not an expert in this stuff, you need to talk to a shop that kind of knows your application, whatever vehicle you're looking to do, and you consult with them on what your goals are. You know, again, that low end, mid end, you know, high end kind of power delivery. Um, there's lots of different options, so that can be kind of confusing and frustrating. And if you get the wrong thing, that would be a big drawback, a lot of money spent for nothing. Wrong size uh, turbo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, which could be, for example, lag, lag, you know, too big of a turbo. Um, every super ever, oh, right? Gosh. You know. So but, do you think super guys go to the super shops and say, I, want, I still want to run 13s, but I want to do it at 150? I, I, I think that's the thing these days. There's you know? gonna be a letter from a super They guy. just want to beat the Busa from a roll. Yeah, okay, you know? okay, so, I get it. No, just kidding. Yeah, sorry but, super um, guys. You know, plumbing can be also kind of a, a dra uh, drawback to the turbo systems. You know, not every engine bay is the same. A lot of them are getting really tight in there. So it can become, you know, quite a custom, you know, custom expensive shop. option to do. Yep. So, um, you know, not every vehicle is going to be just, you know, buy it off the shelf and put it on. It's going to be, you know, expensive, could take weeks to get done, months, depending on, you know, your shop and what your goals are. Sure. Um, so, so the cost went up when you said that. Yeah. 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 
So that happens. I mean, you pay to play. You did pay, yes. How fast do you want to spend? I think is, I hear that a yeah. lot. So then deciding which option to purchase really is more of a, um, which size turbo, what size intercooler, that sort of thing. But you can kind of drown in those options. Yeah. That and the can lag be can be an issue. Which introduces another option, nitrous. What would you pick out of one of these, these force induction systems? Okay, for me it depends on the car. What I'm using the car for, stoplight to stoplight, might be a PD blower. Um, this is a top end kind of thing, more of a highway. It's it's a it's it's more of a centrifugal or even a turbo. I love to roll into a turbo and get that torque. But like you said, if the day ends in a Y, it's a boost day. It's a boost either way. Day. You can't lose. It's, yeah, those are all winners. Absolutely. To me. We hope this information helps you pick out your new force induction system. We want to know what you would choose, so go ahead and leave us a comment below. That sounds like a good idea. And if you're looking for more information on how to tune your new force induction system, make sure you check out thetuningschool.com. Don't forget to subscribe for more high performance tuning knowledge, and as always, stay tuned. Listen here, boost junkies. What's your form of crack? <laughs> what kind of boost are you junking on these days? Or at least we got All that boost. All All that boost. That boost. <laughs> we got the boost. <laughs> Finish that word. <laughs> Induction application? Nope. <laughs> <laughs>